All right, this is subpart two and three of your IA number one. You guys worked really hard on subpart one, and you're going to be finished after these two parts. Go ahead and write your name on the front before you move on. Read the passage and answer the questions one through seven. Remember, you are getting graded on annotations, your genre-based thinking job, and your testing strategies that you use on your questions. If you need to make a note of that, pause the video and do that now. Excerpt from Emma by Jane Austen. Emma Woodhouse, handsome, clever, and rich, with a comfortable home and happy disposition, seemed to unite some of the best blessings of existence and had lived nearly 21 years in the world with very little to distress or vex her. She was the youngest of the two daughters of a most affectionate, indulgent father, and had in consequence of her sister's marriage been mistress of his house from a very early period. Her mother had died too long ago for her to have more than an indistinct remembrance of her caresses, and her place had been supplied by an excellent woman as governess, who had fallen little short of a mother in affection. Sixteen years had Miss Taylor been in Mr. Woodhouse's family, less as a governess than a friend, very fond of both daughters, but particularly of Emma. Between them, it was more the intimacy of sisters. Even before Miss Taylor had ceased to hold the nominal office of governess, the mildness of her temper had hardly allowed her to impose any restraint. And the shadow of authority began, being now long passed away, they had been living together as friend, and friend very mutually attached. And Emma, doing just what she liked, highly esteeming Miss Taylor's judgment, but directed chiefly by her own. The real evils, indeed, of Emma's situation were the power of having rather too much her own way, and a disposition to think a little too well of herself. These were the disadvantages which threatened Alloy to her many enjoyments. The danger, however, was at present so unperceived that they did not by any means rank as misfortunes to her. Nominal means in name only. Esteeming means regarding highly. Alloy means dilute or reducing the purity of. Sorrow came, a gentle sorrow but not at all in the shape of any disagreeable consciousness. Miss Taylor married. It was Miss Taylor's loss which first brought grief. It was on the wedding day of this beloved friend that Emma first sat in mournful thought of any continuance. The wedding over and the bride people gone, her father and herself were left to dine together, with no prospect of a third to cheer a long evening. Her father composed himself to sleep after dinner as usual, and she had then only to sit and think of what she had lost. The event had every promise of happiness for her friend. Mr. Weston was a man of unexceptionable character, easy fortune, suitable age, and pleasant manners. And there was some satisfaction in considering with what self-denying, generous friendship she had always wished and promoted the match. But it was a black morning's work for her. The want of Miss Taylor would be felt every hour of every day. She recalled her past kindness, the kindness, the affection of 16 years, how she had taught and how she had played with her from five years old, how she had devoted all her powers to attach and amuse her in health, and how nursed her through the various illnesses of childhood. A large debt of gratitude was owing here, but the last seven years, the equal footing and perfect unreserve which had soon followed Isabella's marriage on their being left to each other, was yet a dearer, tenderer recollection. She had been a friend and companion such as few possessed, intelligent, well-informed, useful, gentle, knowing all the ways of the family, interested in all its concerns, and peculiarly interested in herself, in every pleasure, every scheme of hers, one to whom she could speak every thought as it arose, and who had such an affection for her as could never find fault. How was she to bear the change? It was true that her friend was going only a half a mile from them, but Emma was aware that great must be the difference between a Mrs. Weston, only half a mile from them, and a Miss Taylor in the house, and with all her advantages, natural and domestic, 
She was now in great danger of suffering from intellectual solitude. She dearly loved her father, but he was no companion for her. He could not meet her in conversation, rational or playful. Isabella is Emma's older sister. And this word that you're about to see in paragraph eight, valetudinarian is someone overly anxious about his or her health. The evil of the actual dispar disparity in their ages, and Mr. Woodhouse had not married early, was much increased by his constitution and habits. For having been a valetudinarian all his life, without activity of mind or body, he was a much older man in ways than in years. And though everywhere beloved for the friendliness of his heart and his amiable temper, his talents could not have recommended him at any time. Right, you're going to pause the video right here and write your genre-based thinking job in the blank space. Do that before you go into the questions. When you're ready for the questions, you can click play again. Right, as we start the questions, make sure you're using testing strategies. Number one. In paragraph three, what does the phrase shadow of authority suggest about the relationship between Emma and Miss Taylor? A, Miss Taylor had kept constant watch over Emma. B, Miss Taylor had been saddened by Emma's attitude. C, Miss Taylor had little control of Emma's behavior. D, Miss Taylor had been jealous of Emma's carefree life. Number two, how does the author's choice of words in paragraph four impact the tone of the passage? A, they create a judgmental tone by implying that Emma is uncaring and believes her character is superior to others. B, they support an expectant and mildly suspenseful tone by implying that Emma is likely to have her character tested. C, they create a reassuring tone by indicating that Emma's strong sense of self will help her overcome challenges. D, they support a conceited tone by indicating that Emma's upbringing will ensure her, ensure her a place in high society. Number three, which set of statements best summarizes the passage? A, Emma is pleased that her governess has married and has every promise of happiness. However, after the wedding, Emma is saddened by the prospect of having only her father to dine with in the evenings. B. Emma is pretty, clever, rich, and happy. The wedding of Miss Taylor, her governess, prompts Emma to recall with fondness the loving care and attention Miss Taylor provided her over the years. C. Emma is a privileged, happy young woman who has had a carefree life. She is faced with the prospect of feeling lonely, perhaps for the first time, with her governess and good friend married and leaves the household. D. Emma is very close to her governess, Miss Taylor, who has been a good friend since Emma was a young child. After Miss Taylor marries, Emma worries about how she will get along with her father, whose personality is very different from Emma's. Number four, the following item has two parts. Answer part A, then answer part B. Part A, what does the reader understand about Emma that she does not understand about herself? A, she is self-centered and somewhat spoiled. B, she presents having to be the mistress of her father's house. C, Miss Taylor is her good friend only because Emma's father pays her. D, her fears of being lonely are unfounded. Part B, select the quote from the passage that best supports the correct answer to part A. A, Emma Woodhouse, handsome, clever, and rich with a comfortable home and happy disposition, seemed to unite some of the best blessings of existence. Paragraph one. B, the wedding over, her father and herself were left to dine together, with no prospect of a third to cheer a long evening. Paragraph 5. C. 
She recalled her past kindness, the kindness, the affection of 16 years, how she had taught and how she had played with her from five years old. Paragraph 6. D. Miss Taylor had been a friend and companion such as few possess, peculiarly interested in herself and every pleasure, every scheme of hers. Paragraph 6. Number 5. Read the sentence from paragraph 6. Mr. Weston was a man of unexceptionable character, easy fortune, suitable age, and pleasant manners. And there was some satisfaction in considering with what self-denying, generous friendship she had always wished and promoted the match. But it was a black morning's work for her. What does this scene reveal about Emma's character? A. She is jealous of her friend's marriage. B. She thinks her friend has made a mistake. C. She is determined to remain close to her friend. D. She feels she has sacrificed for her friend's happiness. Number six. What does the word disparity mean as it is used in paragraph eight? A. Doubt. B. Disapproval. C. Difference. D. Deceit. Number seven. The following item has two parts. Answer part A and then answer part B. Part A. Which sentence best states a theme of the passage? A. Adjusting to new circumstances can be difficult. B. Close friendships take time to develop. C. Memories of long ago can often be inaccurate. D. Loneliness finds everyone at times. Part B. How does Miss Taylor's approach to her work as Emma's governess relate to the theme of the passage? A. Miss Taylor's permissive style leaves Emma unprepared to handle her leaving. B. Miss Taylor's changing relationship with Emma reflects Emma's growing maturity. C. Miss Taylor's many years of loyal service provided an example to Emma about friendship. D. Miss Taylor's decision to marry gives Emma a chance to go stronger and more independent. Once you finish all those questions, you're going to click on the next video and we'll do the last passage, which is passage number two.